to the Foot Rundown here with another Stockport County match preview today as Mansfield take on Stockport County this weekend. It feels, it feels like it's been a long time actually since County played Bristol on Saturday, but little by little, we're just getting through the week and closer to the weekend, of course, when Stockport County do take on Mansfield away from home. It's been a brilliant start to the season for Stockport County, three wins from three. Uh, but this weekend well, it presents a different kind of challenge. It you know, presents probably the toughest challenge we've had in League One so far this season, you know, Cambridge, we didn't think was going to be the toughest game, but we made it light work of it, probably a little bit easier than we thought it was going to be. Blackpool, we thought a team close to playoffs last season, we thought that would be a bigger, you know, a bigger test than it turned out to be. We beat them 3-0, maintaining a clean sheet in, you know, a consecutive game. And then Bristol Rovers, you thought maybe they might be uh, slightly more difficult. Again, 2-0, fairly comfortable in the end. So it's been quite an easy start for, uh, for you know, for Stop County in League One. Perhaps we hit our first stumbling block, uh, you know, this weekend. Um, potentially this form could slide away, but, uh, you know, I, I don't see it at the moment. Of course, I'm making a few references uh, if people haven't picked up already. It, it has been, a, you know, a strange week. It's been um, a, a very bizarre week. As I say, we've, we all know what, what's happened. The comeback, the reunion, Oasis, everyone's talking about it. And it's even managed to find its way onto this channel as well. Absolutely excited, absolutely buzzing for it. Um, people are probably, sick, you know, sick to death of hearing about Oasis getting back together, the reunion and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to talk about it briefly because I am someone of, you know, of an age who wasn't, you know, able to go and see them when, you know, live when they were making music. Um, and I think hopefully, fingers crossed, if we, you know, if we can get a ticket uh, and I think everyone around the world will be looking to get hold of a ticket. They even mean to make a reference then. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's a big opportunity for people, for the people who loved them when they were around in the 90s and early 2000s who want to go back and see them again for the, for the you know for the young generation it's grown up and hasn't even been able to you know to have the opportunity to see them live it is absolutely amazing hopefully i get that opportunity and hopefully those of you that are, you know that also want to do that as well get that opportunity but yeah i mean it's going to be an interesting one actually funnily enough we've been, you know we take on mansfield uh, this weekend the last time we actually beat Mansfield, I think Oasis was you know back together for the first time. So uh, that's how long ago it's been. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting on this weekend. Obviously, it's been an exciting week for people who are excited about music and Oasis. But uh, yeah, let's focus on Stockport County and Mansfield, of course, uh, this weekend. It's going to be an interesting game. Like I say, currently 15th in League One so far this season. They started the season with a 2-1 win at Oakwell against last season's playoff contenders, Barnsley. Uh, they were knocked out at the Carabao Cup to division rivals Bolton, 5 form penalties. After that, they faced Burton in a six-goal thriller, which they uh, which finished 3-3. And then after that, they they also lost 4-1 to Lincoln City. That's in their latest League One match. So in three League One matches so far this season, they've experienced winning, drawing, and of course, losing. Scoring six and conceding eight along the way. Uh, Lee, uh, Lee Gregory made a return to the Stags this summer and has started in goal-scoring fashion with two goals from three matches. Uh, Mansfield Town, of course, are well-known for being a well-set uh, well set up defensive side in League 2 last season. With the fewest goals conceded in League 2, the Stags conceded just 47 league goals last season, just one fewer than Stockport County. Though, of course, they were a low conceding side last season. They also had a strong attack with 90 league goals in League 2 last season, scoring more than the likes of Wrexham, Notts County and MK Dons. Again, only Stockport County scored more goals in League 2 last season than, of course, Mansfield Town with 96 goals in League 2. Overall, Mansfield were a very well-balanced team last season. Uh, however, that hasn't been the case this season. They haven't started the, uh, the, the season particularly in the same fashion as last season. Uh, and although they still rank above average for goals scored with six, they've conceded the second highest amount of uh, goals with eight. Only Blackpool conceded more so far this season. Still early on in the season, though, of course, and they'll probably be counting's toughest test as of yet. Uh, County, of course, yet to concede a goal in League One this season, uh, while scoring seven already. They rank the second highest for goals scored. Only Lincoln have scored more with eight for them, of which, uh, of course, were scored against this weekend's opponents. So goals have obviously not been in short supply for Stockport County uh, so far this season. Um, however, a strong start to life at County for summer signing Curry Adai has been equally as impressive. Uh, the three clean sheets in his first three matches makes him the first county keeper to do so since Wayne Hennessy in 2007. Uh, Hennessy, who has gone on to make 109 caps 
for Wales to date was on loan from Wolves during that time and actually kept a further five successive clean sheets, resulting in his initial one-month loan being extended by an extra month. County favourite Louis Barry is, of, you know, he's an obvious one to watch for Mansfield this weekend. The scoring three and three so far with his three goals, all helped, all helping put County in the lead in those games, showing the influence he has on the team. Cal Wotton, though, fresh from putting pen to paper on a new three-year deal, is also another man to watch after starting the season impressively with two goals and two assists. Worryingly, though, however, Wotton uh, has never actually managed to be on the winning team when facing Mansfield. During his career, he's faced them five times. Uh, I think he's had two draws and three defeats against the Stags. He's also failed to register a goal or assist in any of those five matches against Mansfield as well in his career. So hopefully he can have a better showing against Mansfield this weekend. Uh, but to name a player that isn't, you know, Wilson or Barry at the moment, um, as a player to watch in this game for Mansfield, I'm going to say Jack Diamond. Um, obviously coming from Sunderland in the summer, uh, he's obviously got, you know, he's obviously got talent. I just don't think we've seen the best of it. And as much as Fevrier looks like a more impactful player at the moment, uh, those minutes have come from the bench, which to me shows that Chaloner clearly sees something in Diamond that has kept his place in the team ahead of Fevrier. And Diamond himself, as I say, has shown moments, but he's yet to unleash his real potential. And perhaps we could see that this weekend. If we just have a quick look at the League One table as well, of course, we're going to be showing the top half of the table here. Stockport County currently top of that table. Is, you know, it's exactly where we want to be. Uh, three wins from three on nine points with seven goals difference, the highest in the league. Huddersfield Town just behind us with, obviously, uh, three games played, three wins as well, uh, and a plus four goals difference for them, nine points, of course, as well. Huddersfield are looking like a very solid team so far this season in League One. Charlton, Wrexham and Birmingham all in the playoff spots as well, as well as Lincoln at the moment. That's interesting. Peter, but currently out of that position, they've had two wins and one defeat from three games. The same as Crawley Town. And as you can see, the bottom half of the table, uh, a lot of the, well, in fact, every team we've played in the league so far find themselves in the bottom half of the table. Bristol, Cambridge, and of course, Blackpool, who even find themselves in the relegation zone at the moment. They'll be hoping to try and get out of that very, very quickly. Head-to-head -head record between the two teams. Like I say, the record is not particularly great um, you know, for Stockport County against Mansfield in recent years. Uh, Mansfield beat County both home and away last season. Uh, Mansfield have been a bit of a bogey team, I think it's fair to say, for County in recent years. Facing each other four times over the last two seasons. The Stags have picked up three wins and a draw against the Hatters. The last time County beat Mansfield was back in April 2008. Both sides scored own goals at Edgy Park that day, with Gary Dicker scoring in the wrong net, putting Mansfield one up after 39 minutes, before Carl Muggleton would do the same just five minutes later, before Liam Dickinson scored for the home side in the 74th minute to get the win for County that day. Uh, the last time County actually won away against Mansfield, though, at their ground, came in the LDV Vans Trophy back in 2003 when Stuart Barlow scored a brace to seal a 2-1 win for County. The initial fixture between the two clubs takes us back to the 12th of November 1932. Uh, the game ended 2-2 and the overall record between the two sides is more equal than recent meetings would suggest as Mansfield have won on 33 occasions. You know, we've drawn 21 times while County have won 30 just three short of levelling the Stags on that overall head-to-head -head record. Now into team news then, of course, injuries has been uh, you know, a hot topic for Stop County going into this season. Well, obviously, we know about the injury crisis we had last season. We've gone into this season in uh, you know, a similar situation, which is, I'm fed up with talking about injuries, to be honest. Um, listening to Dave Chal on a post-match, didn't really seem to get much clarification on who may well be back for this game, only maybe further doubt of another player that could potentially miss out, and that is Jay Mingy who did go down late on with a hamstring issue against Bristol Rovers on Saturday. And when Dave Chalner was asked about it in his post-match after the game, he said, uh, now, now, well, he basically, I'm paraphrasing, he said, but, you know, with the injury situations at the moment, he said, uh, basically, that, you know, we're not used to it now. He, he's taking the approach of expecting the worst and hopefully proving wrong. Uh, five players, he did, he did say, should be back for the Crawley match, uh, potentially. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm not too sure who's going to be back for this game. To be honest, Lewis Bate, he didn't really comment on from what I've seen. Obviously, he had a you know a rumoured injury which opened the door for Oliver Norwood to come in and make his debut uh, at Edgley Park last weekend. Hopefully, Lewis Bate, it's not too bad. He did say he's been playing with a, a, a bit of a niggle, so maybe bringing in Norwood was uh, an opportunity for Bate to rest rather than him actually having a major injury that we have to deal with. So maybe Bate will find himself back on the bench. Maybe he'll even start, who knows. Hopefully he's overcome that slight problem he's had and hopefully, as I say, it's nothing major. 
Um, but yeah, in terms of players like Rydell and, and players like that being back, Stretton, uh, he didn't say when they would be back. So I'm assuming they're part of the five players that might be back for the next league game after this. Um, obviously, Nick Powell should be back now. It looked like he was going to be back um, a week or two ago. You'd expect he's got to be back involved now. Uh, otherwise, questions will start to be asked about what's going on behind the scenes because it does seem to be a little bit up in the air with Powell. It's like, you know, is, is he part of the plans? Is he not part of the plans? Because he was injured for a little bit and, and, and then he was meant to be back and he's still not back in the picture. So, um, yeah, a lot of people are unsure as to what's happened with Nick Powell, to be honest. So I think County needs to really come out and clarify that that situation. Uh, with, with the window just a few days from closing as well, uh, You know, are we going to see a late move for him to move on? I'm not too sure, but it doesn't appear like he's a big part of the plans, which is strange because when we signed him a year ago, the hype that we have for Norwood coming in now is the hype we probably had for Powell when he came in last season. and He's just not managed to live up to it, and I think that's partly down to injury. Um, but also, as well, I don't think he quite fits in with how we want to play, which I think is a bit of an issue. But there's no doubt in his, you know, his talent, his ability. I just don't think we've seen the best of it at the county, and it is a shame. But I'd like to see him get the opportunity to try and show that he can do it, because we all know he can. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he gets that opportunity this season. Hopefully it comes sooner rather than later, because the more that we get more and more players back as well, uh, like Fiorini and players like Callum Connolly, the harder it's going to be for him to get you know into that team, because it's difficult now. And... Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting one. In terms of um, you know team team prediction, what I would go with or, or whatever, however you look at it, I'm not going to expect too many changes. In fact, I'm probably going to go unchanged, to be honest. I think Jay Mingy will be okay at right back, so I think he'll continue there, uh, that sort of right back position. He, we seem to be playing a little bit sort of right back, um, you know, in possession, right side at centre back in a back three, out of possession, which is interesting, which is... I think where Diamond struggles, when, when we're out of possession, he's sort of been asked to play deeper, uh, more of a right, right wing back role as opposed to right wing. So I've spoke about that previously as well. Corey Adai, of course, is going to start in goal. He started to he started life at County very, very well. Uh, I don't think he could have asked for a better start, to be honest. Uh, horse form pie, we know just, you, you know, you, you know they're undroppable. Uh, Ibal Torre, who has actually been selected during the international break, but it won't affect County because that game was postponed with Redden, of course. Uh, on the 7th of September. That has been arranged for the 29th of October, I think now, off the top of my head, which is a Tuesday night game, which is um, slightly frustrating, but luckily it's not an away game because I did plan on going to that game and it's been moved. So it's good good job it's not an away game where you're trying to get to on a Tuesday night. But yeah, uh, Norwood, I think, will start again in that position um, with Bate on the bench, hopefully, uh, because if he's not, it means it you know it could be a more serious injury than, you know, than we think at the moment. I think Collar and Camps will work well in that midfield. They're working well at the moment, so I wouldn't make too many changes there. Uh, Jack Diamond, again, on that right-hand side. I'd love to see Jaden Fevrier come in, but like I say, I think Diamond has got something about him, and Chawana keeps picking him on that right-hand side over Fevrier, so clearly there's something to that, and uh, hopefully he can get a goal and assist and show that quality a little bit more, uh, because there's no doubt in that I can see there's a player in there. I can see that he wants to get, you know, get on the ball more and try and make things happen, so hopefully we can see that because it might just be that goal or assist that really gets him firing and gets him going and talking about getting firing and getting going Louis Barry on the left hand side has got us firing in each of the last three games with the initial goal so I'd like to see him sort of continue that form a little bit more again um, but again he's a young player you know can't put too much pressure on him we said this last season as well so I am wary of putting um, too much pressure on him you know at such a young age still to carry the weight of this team the expectation of this team because People will get carried away. People will say, look, at you know, I mean, if we win convincingly this weekend as well, that's four in four. Everyone will say we're going to win the league. So um, we've got to try and, you know, control expectations. And if Louis Barry puts another fantastic performance, which, will, you know, I wouldn't put past him, um, we do just have to try and monitor the pressure a little bit because, as I say, people can have, um, you know, the ability to go a little bit over the top and understandably as well because when you watch a player like Barry playing, uh, you know, at, you know, at his best, which he is at the moment, he's, you know, he's brilliant to watch, and you, you know, you do want to get carried away. You know, you do want to say things like, "This guy's going to play in the Premier League one day," and hopefully, we stop counting. That may well happen, by the way. But let's just let's just steady things down. Hopefully, he has a good game on 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 Saturday again, though. And uh, at the moment, it seems to be wonder goals only for Louis Barry. So maybe he's got another one in his locker uh, this Saturday as well. What I would say is, if I'm a Mansfield defender try and limit him you know, from shots, especially when he tries to tuck him in to that far corner from the left-hand side. He's threatening him from there. Uh, and don't let him drift inwards as well because he had a decent goal before, you know, uh, last Saturday at Bristol. That was a little bit more central. So, 
yeah, he's, he's just a worry in the box. Keep him out wide. Don't let him in uh, would be the advice I would give to the Mansfield defenders. But hopefully don't listen to that. And if they do let him in because he, he you know creates havoc when he does get in those positions. And of course, Cal Wooten, Tanto Alafi, of course, is the main man. He's the main striker. But with him sort of starting this season with a bit of a knock, a bit of an injury, it's opened the door for Wooten to get minutes to start games. And he, he's paid back the manager. He's paid back the team with you know with having that opportunity. As I say, two goals and two assists from three games. He he really is undroppable right now. And as someone who wasn't the biggest fan of him, still to a degree, he's a little bit skeptical of how well and how consistent he's going to be throughout you know the season. At the moment, you can't argue with it. And at the moment, Tanta Alafi, as good as he is, uh, he's going to have to try and have an impact from the bench to force his way in, which is exactly what you want if you're the manager. Um, to be honest, you want competition for places. You want you know. Really, really capable players on the bench pushing their way, try, you know, trying trying to make something happen in them five ten minutes to get off the bench because that you know they know that's their only opportunity because they can't get Wooten out of the team because of how well he's playing. That's exactly the position Chowner wants to be in as a manager. He wants that headache. He doesn't want an easy selection because it's you know his hands been forced by injury. So this is exactly what we want. And the more we get players back, the, you know, the even tougher it's going to be for Chowner on the Friday before a game. So yeah, that's exactly the position we want to be. I want to get your thoughts on that team. Adai, Mingi, Horsfall, Pie, Torre, Norwood, Collar, Camps, Diamond, Barry and Wooten. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know the changes you would make. And also let me know who you think Dave Chowner will pick as well. I'm going to go with a 2-2 score prediction as well, by the way. I think we will let that record go in terms of clean sheets. And I do think we'll let that winning record go as well. Um, just because the record we have in Mansfield in recent times hasn't been great. It seems like they have a knack for, you know, for knowing how to play against us. That's a worry. And... Hopefully we don't lose the game, but like I say, our record there, you know, and even even at home against them in recent seasons, has not been great. So um, I have to be realistic. I don't I don't want to say we're going to lose the game because I'm, you know, you never want to predict your team to lose. But I will go with a two two draw. I think that would be a decent point away from home as well on the road. So yeah, two two draw. I think I even said who I think will get the goal as well. That's it. I said Jack Diamond and Tanto Alafi off the bench up with the two goals for County. Let's see what happens with that. But like I say. It should be a good game. It's a real interesting test. It's the first test I think we've had this season. Funnily enough, a team that we played last season in League Two is our biggest test so far in League One. And I think it's partly because we've played them so often is probably the fact that it might make it tougher because they know how to play against us and the record against us is good. So I am fearing this game a little bit. But yeah, um, questions for you lot in the uh, you know in the comment section. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on how you think currently have started the season. How long can County keep up this current form, this momentum? Uh, expectations and predictions for the match against Mansfield as well. If you're a Mansfield fan, uh, who's the biggest threat from Mansfield? Who do, who do we need to keep an eye on? Other than, of course, Lee Gregory, who scored two in three so far. And also, who worries you from Stockport County squad? Uh, other than Louis Barry, of course, who everyone seems to know about at the moment. And also, season expectations, that's from both fans. What are your expectations of the season for Mansfield and for Stockport County? And like always... Get those comments in in the comment section below, of course. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you are new as well. Uh, don't forget as well, do check out my monthly membership as well if you're interested in that, uh, just to try and support the channel. Never really mentioned it before, but I thought I might as well. It's you know Just put it out there, not force anyone into it, but do keep an eye on it if it's something you might be interested in doing, if you want to contribute to the channel by all means um hit, you know check check you know check that out but uh yeah hopefully you enjoyed the video guys and uh yeah i won't be there on saturday because i am busy with other plans i'm debating whether or not to do a pre-match live before the game though so let me know your thoughts or whether or not you want to see me go live pre-match on saturday um in the comments of course like i say like the video subscribe as always and hopefully you've enjoyed the video get your score predictions in below yeah.